Hey, welcome back. So in the last few videos, we've been looking at objects floating in bodies of liquid, liquid, and specifically they were floating in water. And all of these objects had uniform composition and they were simple objects like blocks. But I wanna talk about the case of boats, right? Boats float in water and they are massive, massive objects and they don't have uniform composition. They're made out of a lot of different types of materials and geometry and they seem to just float on top of water effortlessly. Now again, for simple objects like this wooden block that we had in this body of water, we had some sort of buoyant force that was equal to the weight of the object. And the object itself had to displace enough water so that the weight of the water could match the weight of the actual object. And that was essentially this buoyant force pushing up on the object, keeping this entire system in static equilibrium. Now on the right side here, don't freak out. This might be kind of a confusing drawing. This diagram here on the right is my boat. And this boat is really just uh, a hollow box with massless walls. So all four of these walls are massless, uh, but they have some H uh, height H. Now at the bottom of this boat, we have the actual floor and that floor has some area A. And I wanna use this diagram to basically illustrate how boats float. Now the important concept to remember here is that boats float if the weight of the displaced water equals the weight of the boat. And we've been talking a lot about different types of mass density. So in other words, if the mass density of the actual object, the average mass density of the object is less than the mass density of the water, then that object will float. Now remember, mass density is equal to the mass over volume. So this is just our typical definition of mass density. And for the boat that we're looking at, I'm just gonna call that mass density of the boat just rho average. And rho average is going to be equal to the mass of the boat divided by the volume of the boat. Now I wanna be clear, this volume that I'm talking about here is not truly the entire volume of the boat, but it's essentially the volume that is submerged beneath the water line here. So in this case of the wooden block, the volume that we would look at is this volume right here. And on the case here on the right, the volume that we would look at is this volume right here. And this is, three-dimensional, so just bear with me, but we're talking about this volume right here beneath the water line, which is this line right here. And for the case of the boat, that volume that we're looking at, so the volume is going to be equal to the area of the floor times the height of the wall, or in other words, the height of the boat up to the submerged surface. So in this case, the height that we're looking at is this height right here. So all of this, this is what I'm talking about when I say H, that is this H right here. Now, if we know that the mass density of the boat has to be less than the mass density of the water, then I can essentially use this relationship to figure out what the minimum height of these massless walls need to be in order for the boat to float. So how do we figure that out for the boat? Well, again, if we're looking at this equation right here, this relationship right here, we know that the mass density, the average mass density of the boat is going to be equal to the mass of the boat divided by the volume of the boat. And the volume of the boat is equal to A times H. So I can rewrite this as M naught divided by A times H. Now, if we take this equation right here and we solve for H, then our H value is going to be, our H minimum value is going to have to be at least M naught divided by rho of the water times the area of the boat or the floor of the boat. 
So for this very, very simplified case, the walls of this boat need to be at least the mass divided by the ro uh, row of the water times the area of the floor. And that will give us this H minimum. So that H minimum is this H right here. And for this very, very simple boxy boat, that is what our H min needs to be in order for the boat to float. Now, obviously this is very, very simplified. Boats don't look like open boxes like this, but hopefully this does give you a little bit of a better idea as to how the geometry of the actual boat can push aside or displace a large amount of liquid so that the buoyant force matches the weight of the boat.